Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mechabellum. This is going to be a spectator match, and I couldn't tell you the names of them. I clicked on a random match of some fairly high combat power people, which are on the front page currently right now of the Mechabellum screen. Whenever you go to matchmake, you can always see a bunch of matches going on uh, with a bunch of very, very high level players. And of course, you'll see other matches to join, such as like survival matches and bot stomps and all that fun stuff. But... I just want to show off the game at a higher level as well, uh, on top of my own videos here where I'm playing the game myself. So this will be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy it as I try and shoutcast it here. We have Hotaro and Mad Max, currently with a wide selection of characters here to choose from. Curious what they will go with. Always a nice array every time. I never feel like there's a wrong choice to pick here. Just a... Uh, you know, some choices are good and some choices are even better. All right, let's see what Otaru went with. Otaru went with Giant Specialist and looks like they spawned in with Arc Lights and two squads of Phoenixes. Curious what they'll go with. As you can see, their opponent went with Quick Supply Specialist. So at the beginning of the game, they get an extra 200 supply as well as their army is three snipers and two sledgehammers. Currently brought into the board is a couple of fangs for Otaru. And Hotaru is spawning in with 4,000 HP against Mad Max's 3,400. So curious to see how this will play out. Giant Specialist, of course, allows him to purchase some giant units for free, which is very, very nice. Rather, you unlock them, you can't really put them on the board for free. So keep that in mind as well. So at the moment, we have three squads of Sledgehammer suspending so that 200 additional supply, of course, to get one or two extra marksmen here. Is that two? No, it looks like one extra marksman and one extra sledgehammer squad. So it should be about 100 bucks left over right now. Curious to see if he goes for any sort of sentry missiles here as Mad Max positions his units accordingly. It looks like uh, going for a fairly symmetrical build, just a little bit more on the right side. And here we go, round number one. Again, the most volatile round of all. You really don't know where your opponent's going to be positioning their troops. And I'm curious what will happen here. We got aerial snipers in the form of phoenixes on the left side of the board. And looks like left side of the board is pretty close. Unless those snipers can get some serious hits in. Oh, nope. Looks like they're going to go down. And in the meantime, there's only five sledgehammers left against two marksmen. Rather, Phoenix is there, but two marksmen are left over on the board, and they can definitely get a kill in here. One marksman turns over, gets the kill, and that Phoenix is too distracted by the sledgehammer there. So the first round goes to Mad Max, and now all bets are off. At the moment, both teams know exactly where each other are spawning in, and now it's up to them to respond to what's happening here. Early supply specialist currently on Hotaru, and looks like he grabbed a couple of squads there. Curious to see what Mad Max goes for. It looks like a couple of fangs just produced for Hotaru on the board. And a reinforcement. So going for three units in one round by getting the research here over on the command center allows him to grab that crawler there. And the round's already in. I didn't get a chance to actually see what was grabbed on the opponent's side of the board. Looks like a couple of storm crawlers and curious to see what he grabbed if he grabbed the uh, additional supplies per round. A round two on additional supplies, really, really good here. Gonna zoom in here on the right side of the board. Looks like it's gonna be another handed win from Mad Max. Massive army of sledges and storm crawlers, really solid composition overall. And looks like once again, the left side of the board gonna be wiped clean by the arc lights and just a few crawlers there, which are so nice. They're so nice to have a little bit of flak in there, especially against marksmen to be able to deal with it. It looks like a twin blast from both armies, both gonna be slowed down, damage reduced. Storm crawlers are getting ready to launch on that arc light and ooh, both phoenixes are deciding to divert their attention, but the snipers with their insane range just from default are able to deal with those phoenixes no problem. That's not to say Phoenixes are bad by any stretch against Snipers. In fact, they are quite good. But unfortunately, when they have no army to back them up, much like Snipers, they're going to be toasted in no time at all. And on a one-on-one -on -one straight up fight, typically the Sniper's going to be able to get that shot in there, as I believe Snipers typically get uh, slightly uh, more attack range, or excuse me, attack cycles or attack speed. 
Smoke bomb going out on both sides of the board. Will Mad Max go for smoke bomb as well or hold it off until next round? Now, smoke bomb, if you haven't seen it before, will limit the range of units that are within it, so they will have to leave the smoke bomb to be able to fire through it. It shouldn't block vision of units behind it, though. So as long as you're in the smoke bomb, you can't shoot. If you're out of the smoke bomb, well, you're probably fine. So as you'll see here, all ground units will not be able to see over this, but the sentry missile uh, turret there, the one that's shooting down those Stormcaller missiles, yeah, they're able to shoot it just fine, but those fangs will not be able to fire on those sledgehammers. Sledgehammers, however, will be able to fire into that squad, no problem here. And what was originally a side of victory for Hotaru is now no longer the case, as the sledgehammer Stormcaller composition and snipers are having no problem dealing with everything there. Of course, a few of those missiles will probably go out and destroy that sentry missile turret. Or sentry turret, excuse me. And it looks like the east side just barely being able to squeeze out a victory there. It looks like we're going to have a twin blast once again. Both research centers, or excuse me, command centers, I believe those are, going down relatively close to the same side here. But thankfully there is a shield, so uh, one shot will get blocked. Or two, or three, or forty depending on the damage deduction here. There you go, shield does go down, so that will not carry over to the next round. Both players opt to speed up the round here. And really, it's just a battle of mitigation of damage here. Hataru taking a big hit. Will he be able to pull it through? I really am curious to see if he'll be able to pull himself out of this well. Orbital Bombardment coming out, very powerful. Quite often picked, I find, in high-level play. and all levels of play, really. It's an inexpensive card to grab. And looks like Mad Max is going for Parasitic Ammo. I'm curious to see what he'll put that on. I do see it a lot on Stormcaller, so that'll be very interesting indeed. Range coming out on Phoenixes. Looks like we do have a potential upgrade here on one of the Phoenixes as well. Two of the Phoenixes, actually, but they're not going to go for it, potentially. Looks like the round's about to begin as Mad Max is just finalizing his decisions here. Going for Mechanical Rage on the Sledgehammers, which reduces attack intervals and as well as movement speed. So these tanks will be quite speedy this time around. 11 meters a second. Pretty nice. In comparison to, I believe, what is normally 7 around there. I can definitely add 4 or deduct 4. Let's be honest. Mass on my strong suit. Let's go. Sentry Missile coming out, blasting away and destroying a whole squad of Stormcallers there. Beautiful Sentry Missile positioning. Massive army of Phoenixes with range will be really nice to clean up that army of Sledgehammers, which were just upgraded, which means they will be getting shot at a bit earlier. Which means they also don't have that support of the Crawlers that were usually in the way. And looks like Hataru is able to turn it around here. Beautiful play with the range. Phoenix is absolutely outranging the snipers, which were once outranging him. And Mad Max now suffering a big hit here, going below the health of Hotaru. The first big turnaround. Laser sights coming in from Hotaru. Curious what he's going to throw that on. Mad Max currently making a choice here. Deciding what would be the best selective choice. We're going to hide the panel at the moment. And we are seeing six whole Phoenix squads out on the board with range. Curious if any upgrades will go out and is range applied? Yes, range is applied to the highest damage unit currently right now on Hotaru's side. We do have a rear crawler squad there as well. His opponent going for senior defense specialist, more health. Will Mad Max be able to survive these hits? It's definitely possible. However, going up against Phoenixes, well, it could be a nice break point. It could mean that the Phoenixes will need one additional shot to wipe out whatever it is they are shooting. But with a lot of units being at level one, well, the Phoenixes as well, I don't think it will really affect it too much. But I actually am curious to see how this will play out. It does look like the Marksman is going for Parasitic Ammo, which will get a few shots in here at the Fang. So what that will do is we'll spawn in Crawlers in place of whatever unit is killed which can be a great way to distract. However, shields coming out on Hutaru's side. I am really curious to see how this is going to play out here. Let's take, pay attention to the east side here as the Parasitic Ammo is going to come out and into play. A few shots coming out. One crawler comes out, and as each crawler 
is being produced. It looks like sometimes these Phoenixes are going for that shot, but the Arclight is doing a great job of cleaning those up very, very quickly here on the east side of the map. Looks like the east side is going to go to Hotaru. West side, on the other hand, looks like it's barely scraping by, but it does look like these Phoenixes are just doing a great job having that range. Two more snipers to go, plus one Stormcaller. Stormcaller goes down. It looks like it should be an easy cleanup here. It actually looks at the east side. Had a bit of a rougher time here, but thankfully the command center does go down. And like it was nothing, Hotaru coming back with a big play here, bringing Mad Max down to 1,300 health against Hotaru's 2,500. This next round could be the end of it all if Hotaru plays his cards right, or maybe he'll play it safe and try to stay alive. Nano Repair Kit is on the board, but Hotaru goes for plus 50 resources. I am super curious. Oh, Nano does come out on Mad Max. Could we be seeing a super giant unit potentially with massive heals? That's definitely possible. Looks like we're getting marksman upgrades on the arc lights. No, we're getting range upgrades on the arc lights. And we have shields and range currently right now on the Phoenixes. Another Phoenix squad coming out. Massive tier one army coming down on Hotaru. Whereas Mad Max is now opting to go for a T2 squadron of sledgehammers here. Really curious to see how this plays out. We have a few Mustangs to help deal with Phoenixes. However, and of course the Chaff as well in, in the form of the Fangs. As Mustangs are fantastic against especially Tier 1 Fangs. Crazy amounts of damage. But the Phoenixes just got shields. I don't know if they're going to be able to handle this. And Hotaru might have a really good chance of surviving here. All right, here we go. This could be the final round. Hotaru versus Mad Max. Those sentry turrets again doing a fantastic job protecting the fangs on the western and eastern fronts. Crawlers are finally coming in here, turning the turrets of the Mustangs as the Phoenixes begin to wipe out as much as they can before they get inflicted by sniper fire and, of course, Mustang fire. But those shields are coming in handy here. The Mustangs got no damage in whatsoever, but the eastern side falls back. Only one Phoenix left, a massive army, and the nano repair kit on those sledgehammers is keeping them nice and healthy here. But unfortunately, those sledgehammers specifically won't be able to shoot up. But it doesn't matter. Looks like Mad Max coming on back with a big play here. Was able to stay alive, destroy that research facility, and then be able to take out all the aerial units during that time where they won't be able to do much damage in retaliation to those sledgehammers. Incredible play there by Mad Max. Now bringing it back down to a closer 1v1 could be anyone's game here. Hotaru versus Mad Max. Currently right now, 1955 for Hotaru and 1352 for Mad Max here. Lots of upgrades now coming out on the Phoenixes for Hotaru's side of the board. And two Vulcans coming out to answer. For the Fang army, including the Crawlers, this will do massive amounts of damage, especially if these Vulcans can be handled. Hotaru also going for his own twin Vulcans. Range upgrade coming out on all units as well for Hotaru. On top of incendiary bombs, this is going to do a lots of flame damage. If this can get a good shot off, it will do tons of damage to the Stormcrawlers and potentially any of the Mustangs if they do get caught up in this smoke bomb area. As the smoke bomb is coming out, will we see one coming out from Mad Max? I am curious. Rapid resupply coming out from Mad Max. He is going into debt, but at this point in the game, it does make sense to give him that little edge of resources. And really, this could be the gut punch mission, usually known as everything all in, try and win it and destroy everything. Vulcans are worth 400 credits if they survive to the end of the round. And hopefully they do, as it will give you a massive benefit when attacking your opponent here. Another, looks like for Mad Max, is going to be putting out a more centralized smoke grenade here to help deal with oh, some of the fangs, and here we go. Potentially, the final round here between Hotaru and Mad Max could be anyone's game here. Looks like the left side of the board here with Hotaru utilizing those flame bursters from the Vulcans is absolutely annihilating a lot of those small fries on the ground, turning them into crispy bacon. And looks like the left side of the board getting wiped out. Can't 
say necessarily the same, although, well, now that the research center is down, it could be very, very close here. We have a high level sniper, looks like a T3 sniper and T2 sniper with range upgrade. Now trying to pick off these Phoenixes here, but they're not gonna be enough. And it looks like Kotaro is gonna take this round and it's gonna be very, very close with 1300 health on Mad Max. This could be a win. It looks like he barely pulls it off Hotaru. Amazing match against Mad Max. Both players extremely skilled, extremely talented. This was anyone's game. And I think Kotaru did a wonderful job here being able to answer to even a loss halfway through his victory streak and still being able to pull it off there in the end. Wow, what a round indeed. Energy shields definitely paid off there, especially with the sniper fire coming on in. And of course, helping deal with the Mustangs at T1. Once the Mustangs start getting going and getting that anti-air, of course, they're going to be able to deal with the aerial units even better. But overall, it looks like Kotaro was able to pull it off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Take care.